The angels of God guard us through the night and silence all which keeps us awake. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and glory. Once we were lost in shadows, but now in the Lord we are light. Let us live as children of the light. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Together let us confess our lives to our God. Ever watchful God, we know that when we could do justice, we chose to ignore the forgotten. That when we could love mercy, we chose to show our mean spirit. That when we could walk humbly with you, we chased after the Pied Pipers of Pride. Forgive us, merciful and loving God. Amen. O Lord, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading tonight is from the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel. We're starting with the 19th verse of the 13th chapter and reading through the 15th verse of chapter 14. Paul, who's been selected as king, is no longer in God's favor. The peace that has been existing between Israel and the Philistines is about to be broken. People are trying to figure out what they're to do next. And one of those people is Jonathan, Saul's son. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, The Hebrews must not make swords or spears for themselves. So all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen their plowshares, mattocks, axes, or sickles. The charge was two-thirds of a shekel for the plowshares, and for the mattocks, and one-third of a shekel for sharpening the axes and for setting the goads. So on the day of the battle, neither sword nor spear was to be found in the possession of any of the people with Saul and Jonathan, but Saul and his son, Jonathan, had them. Now a garrison of the Philistines had gone out to the pass of Michmash. One day Jonathan, son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gebeah under the pomegranate tree that is at Migron. The troops that were with him were about 600 men, along with Ahijah, son of Ahitab, Ichabod's brother, son of Phineas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord in Shiloh, carrying an ephod. Now the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. In the past, by which Jonathan tried to go over to the Philistine garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other. The name of one was Bozaz, and the name of the other was Sina. 
One crag rose on the north in front of Michmash, and the other on the south in front of Geba. Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will act for us, for nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. His armor bearer said to him, Do all that your mind inclines to. I am with you. As your mind is, so is mine. Then Jonathan said, Now we will cross over to those men and will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and we will not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up, for the Lord has given them into our hand. That will be the sign for us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. The men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armor-bearer, saying, Come up to us, and we will show you something. Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet with his armor-bearer following after him. The Philistines fell before Jonathan and his armor-bearer, coming after him, killed them. In that first slaughter, Jonathan and his armor-bearer killed about twenty men within an area about half a furlough long in an acre of land. There was panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison and even the raiders trembled. The earth quaked, and it became a very great panic. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then our psalm for tonight is Psalm 20, and here's a paraphrase. Now, at the end of this day, remind us how you have always been listening to us. Every moment, wrapping your arms of grace tied around us, your mercy flowed like a gentle river, carrying, calming our fears. You held us up whenever we were about to fall flat on our faith. You rejoiced when we made justice our offering to you. You gave us not what we thought we wanted, but what we needed, love instead of lust, hope instead instead of hubris, peace instead of panic, grace instead of grumbles, and we dance in circles holding hands with our siblings. Over and over we discover that you watch over us, even when we become distracted. (coughs) You whisper wonder to us, you pull us away from all the sails on temptation, so we might share laughter and joy with those who long for new life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And then our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 23rd chapter, verses 26 through 31. Again, this is a portion of the passion story of Jesus. As they led him away, speaking of Jesus, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and waiting for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, how? what will happen when it is dry? The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen.
it's Friday and we feel like we can all breathe a sigh of relief that the week is finally over. Of course, for some of us, every day seemed a week's long because we've had struggles, we've had questions, we've had emptiness in our lives, we've found it hard to get up, we found it hard to keep going, to keep putting one foot in front of another. We found it hard to find moments of rest, just some peace and quiet in an ever noisy world. We've needed, as the psalmist reminds us, we've needed God's grace wrapped around us. We've needed mercy flowing through us like a gentle river. And yet as we look back on the week, maybe we discover those things taking place. Maybe we were too busy. Maybe we were too distracted. Maybe we were too frightened. Maybe we're just too unaware of the simple ways in which God continues to be with us in every moment, in every person, in every place, and in every situation. Maybe we did discover that what God gave us It's not what we wanted, but what we needed. Love, hope, grace, peace, kindness, compassion, companionship, solitude, rest, the beauty of creation, the laughter of children, the friendships of those around us. No matter how busy we get, no matter how frightened we are, no matter how distracted we become, God continues to be with us in every moment, in every place, in every person. Amen. Guard us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us in the shadow of your wings. Lord, save us. Save us while we are awake. Protect us while we are asleep, that we may keep our watch with Christ, and when we sleep, rest in his peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people. Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, save us. Save us while we are awake. Protect us while we are asleep, that we may keep our watch with Christ. And when we sleep, rest in his peace. Amen. As we do come to the end of this week, as we come to the end of this day, let us look back and remember those moments when God was with us in every moment, in every place, in every situation, in every person, filling us with grace, surrounding us with comfort, holding us when we were so weary, listening to our hopes, as well as our fears. And in the silence, let us offer up our prayers of thanksgiving to our God for that presence. And in these moments, let us offer up our prayers of need, of concern, of worry and fear, of doubts and distractions for the world in which we live for our nations, our communities, our neighbors, our friends, our families, those we read about or hear about on the news. We are aware of so much brokenness in individual lives, in our lives, but especially in the world, creation that is broken, damaged by 
human greed and misuse, loss and grief, war and death and destruction in places like the Ukraine and Sudan, political leaders who seem to care more about themselves and the people who fund them than about the people they are supposed to be serving. We think about our fears and our worries, our hurts, and we lift them up to God. And we offer up prayers for those who continue to seek to be faithful in so many different ways, in so many different places. We pray especially for the ministers, elders, and members of the churches in East Midland Synod, especially in Nottinghamshire. We pray for Jean Schink and her recovery from her fall, and for the Reverend Brian Schink and his care and concern for her. We pray for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. We pray for Monia's parish priest, Father Andy. We pray with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie, for Judith and Jeffrey, for Lorna and her care as she recovers from surgery. We offer up prayers with Liz for her great nephew Ryan, as well as for her daughter Emma and Emma's young son, Leon. We pray for Cheryl and for Prince and the family as they continue to provide ongoing care and love and support for her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad. We pray for Liz and Ruth as they continue to care for Mike. We pray with Irene for John, with Allison for Sangeeta. We pray for all those who grieve the passing of loved ones. We pray for the victims of violence everywhere, for those who have lost their lives. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Tony Jones, especially his wife, Hazel. We pray for those who grieve for Ian Coates, Grace Somali Kumar, as well as for Barnaby Weber, who lost their lives in the recent attacks in Nottingham. Praying especially for their families and also for those who knew and taught Barnaby at Taunton School, which is associated with the URC. And in the quiet of these moments, as we settle our hearts and souls, may we offer up our prayers of need and concern, those words, those thoughts, those hopes that we can only speak to God. Hear our prayers, O God, those we've spoken aloud as well as those we've whispered in silence as we join in praying together the prayer that Jesus taught using our own words, tradition, language. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now in peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the silent mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And may you rest in God's gracious love this night, dear friends.